I'm so proud of you for watching these video lessons and continuing to grow your comprehension strategies at home. My name is Mrs. Mogelson and I'm a second grade teacher at Olympic Hills Elementary. I'm so happy to be with you again this week and for the rest of this week. For today's lesson, you will need this week's learning packet or a piece of paper and something to write with, either a pen or a pencil. For your IDR time, you're also going to need to either have some post-it notes or just some scraps of paper that you'll be able to write on. I'd like you to please go get those materials now because we will be using them starting almost right away in our lesson. Please make sure that you have your learning packet or a piece of paper, a pencil or a pen, and some sticky notes or some small pieces of paper. In our last week of lessons, uh, we used the strategy of wondering and questioning, and we stopped and asked questions to ourselves about what we were reading. When you stop and ask yourself questions about what you are reading, it helps you to think more deeply about what uh, you're reading, and it also helps your brain be more active as you pay attention to see if your wonderings are explained as you can continue to read. Today, we are going to continue with wondering, and we're going to use the strategy of stopping and asking questions. When we use the stop and ask questions activity, we're going to go further than just asking ourselves questions we're actually going to stop and write those questions down. When you take the time to write your questions down, it helps you to both remember your question and it also helps you to notice when what you're wondering is explained and how those questions are answered. Today, we're going to read a story called Keep On, the story of Matthew Henson, co-discoverer of, of the North Pole. It's written by Deborah Hopkinson, illustrated by Stephen Alcorn, and published by Peachtree Publishers. This narrative nonfiction book tells the story of Matthew Henson, an American Arctic explorer who worked with a team of American and Inuit explorers to reach the North Pole. Please think about the topic and the title and the cover. What questions do you have? Please find your Stop and Ask Questions page in your learning packet. If you don't have a learning packet, please make sure that you have a piece of paper that you can write on. As I read this story to you today, you are going to, I will stop four times and you are going to write down the questions that you have at each stopping point. We're going to use these questions later on in the week, so you'll want to make sure that you hang on to the questions that you write today. Keep on, the story of Matthew Henson, co-discoverer of the North Pole. The black darkness of the sky, the stars twinkling above, and hour after hour going by with no sunlight. Every now and then a moon when storms do not come, and always the cold, getting colder and colder. Matthew Henson. Keep on. The story of Matthew Henson, co-discoverer of the North Pole. Matthew Henson was born in Maryland Cabin at a time when boys dreamed of finding glory, planting flags at the ends of the earth, and making the unknown known and recording their names into history books. Young Matt had that same hunger to explore, but most folks would have laughed at his dreams. For Matt was born in 1866 
just after the Civil War, a time when poor black boys like him had few chances to roam the next county, to say nothing of another country, the Seven Seas, or the top of the world. By the time he was 13, Matt was alone. He set out to make his way in the world, trudging the long road from Washington, D.C. to the harbor of Baltimore. And trudging means to walk slowly with heavy feet. Trudging the long road from Washington, D.C. to the harbor of Baltimore. What a bustling place it was. Gulls screeched. Men shouted and rushed about, loading and unloading ships of every size. And Matt stood alone, keen as an arctic fox, eager to pounce on any chance he could find. And the word pounce means to spring forward suddenly to catch something. And Matt stood alone, keen as an arctic fox, eager to pounce on any chance he could find. Throughout the book, you're going to see these yellow pages. These yellow pages have the words of Matthew Henson from a autobiography that he wrote. I shipped as a cabin boy on board a vessel bound for China. After my first voyage, I became an able-bodied seaman sailing to China, Japan, North Africa, Spain, France, and through the Black Sea to Southern Russia. Matt spied the Katie Hines, a three-masted vessel so sharp and bright she seemed like a, glide to, like a star gliding on water. And when he spotted her proud, white-haired captain, Matt begged for a chance to go to sea. It was breaking all the rules to let a boy under 15 sail, but that old sea dog took a liking to him, and Matthew Anderson Henson became his cabin boy. Please find the first box on your Stop and Ask Questions page. Or if you're using paper, please write the number one at the top of your page. What question can you ask right now? Please write your question in the first box or by your number one. As you're writing your question, please remember that a question needs to start with a capital letter and end with a question mark. Please write now. I finished my writing my question. If this was tricky for you, I'm gonna share my question with you so that you can think of uh, some questions you might have as well. I wondered, will Matt learn how to be a good sailor even though he is too young? If you need some more time for writing your question, go ahead and write as you listen to me read the next section. But that old sea dog took a liking to him, and Matthew Alexander Henson became his cabin boy. For the next five years, Matt's school was the world, his classroom the boat. Captain Childs taught him history and mathematics, and soon Matt could navigate by the stars. And the word navigate means to 
plan and follow a route to get somewhere. And soon Matt could navigate by the stars, tie sailor's knots, and fix or build almost anything. After Captain Childs died, Matt left the sea, unsure of his course. He was working in a store in Washington, D.C. when a naval engineer named Robert E. Perry came looking for a hat and found an assistant besides. Matt proved so able that Perry asked him to join his next expedition to Greenland. Soon Matt realized Perry's heart was set on one goal, to be the first to stand on the top of the world. What question can you ask right now? Find your second box on your page or write the number two on your piece of paper and write your question now. I finished writing my question. If you'd need more time, just finish writing as you're listening to the next part of the story. Soon Matt realized Perry's heart was set on one goal, to be the first to stand on the top of the world. But the pole was not an easy prize and Perry and Matt had much to learn about the harsh cold north. And the word harsh means something is very difficult and unpleasant. But the pole was not an easy prize, and Perry and Matt had much to learn about the harsh, cold north. Matt studied with new teachers now, the Inuit. Of all the explorers who entered their world, Matt was their favorite. They gave him the nickname Mahri Pollock. Matthew, kind one. And in his words, he said, I have come to love these people. I know every man, woman, and child in their tribe. They are my friends, and they regard me as theirs. Matt took the time to listen, to learn their language, and to make friends. He studied how to build and drive a dog sledge. And a sledge is like a sled, only instead of having the bottom flat on the ground, there are runners, kind of like the blades on ice skates. He studied how to build and drive a dog sledge and how to dress and hunt in order to survive. Hardworking, skilled, and kind, Matt Henson earned the respect of all. Eight days out and not a shot, not a sight of game, nothing. The night is coming quickly, the long months of darkness, of quiet and cold, that in spite of my years of experience, I can never get used to. Through the years of struggle and heartbreak, the explorers faced furious storms, the shifting ice, and always, always unrelenting, desperate cold. On Perry's 1906 expedition, he and Matt set a record, reaching farther north than anyone had before. But storms forced them back, the top of the world still out of reach, nearly 200 miles away. The wind would find the tiniest openings in our clothing and pierce us with the force of driving needles. Our hoods froze to our growing beards, and when we halted, we had to break away the ice 
that had been formed. What question can you ask at this part? Please find your third box on your asking questions page or just write a number three on your piece of paper and write your question now. I finished writing my question. Again, if you need more time, go ahead and finish writing your question as you're listening to me read the very next part of the story. Perry was determined to make one final try. And so on July 6, 1908, Perry's team of explorers set sail again on the Roosevelt a ship so strong it could push through the Arctic ice. They spent the winter locked in the frozen sea, readying sledges, supplies, food, stores, and more than 200 dogs. They hauled everything by dog sledge to the northernmost tip of Ellesmere Island. From this base camp, they would launch Perry's last attempt for the pole. The dogs were double fed and we put a good meal inside ourselves before turning in on the night of February 28, 1909. The next morning was to be the launching and we went to sleep full of the thought of what was before us. Day and night were the same. My thoughts were on the going and getting forward and on nothing else. Traveling was slow and the dogs became demons, one at a time sullen and stubborn and then wildly excited and savage. On March 1st, 1909, Perry and Henson's team set out across the frozen polar sea over the endless ridges of sharp drifting ice aiming for one point on the ice at the top of the world, 413 miles away. Perry's plan used support teams of men and dogs to break trail, build igloos, and haul and cache supplies, including the assault forward day by day. But there were only enough supplies for one small team to make the fast and final dash of five grueling marches, 133 miles more. And the word grueling means difficult and hard to do. But there were only enough supplies for one small team to make the fast and final dash of five grueling marches, 133 miles more. By April 1st, Perry had sent everyone back except Matt and four Inuit men, Uta, Siglu, Ukuya, and Egingwa. For Perry could not get along without Matt Henson, experienced, resourceful, brave. Matt was better than anyone else at driving the dogs, fixing stoves and sledges, breaking and finding the trail, urging their Inuit companions on. Without Matt Henson, there would be no pole. Without the Eskimo dog, the story of the North Pole would remain untold, for human ingenuity has not yet devised any other means to overcome the obstacles of cold, storm, and ice that nature has placed in the way. On April 3rd, as they moved across the ice, Matt slipped and fell through. Cold, killing water closed over his head. Matt could not grasp the edge of the ice with his thick gloves. We were crossing the lane of moving ice 
The block of ice I was using as a support slipped from underneath my feet, and before I knew it, the sledge was out of my grasp, and I was floundering in the water of lead. What question can you ask now? Please find your fourth box or write the number four on your piece of paper and write your question now. I'm finished writing my question. Like with the other times, if you need some more time, just finish your question as we finish the book. Matt could not grasp the edge of the ice with his thick gloves. Then in a flash, strong Uta was there. He grabbed Matt and pulled him out as if he were picking up a puppy by the scruff of its neck. He tore off Matt's sealskin boots, beat the water from his bearskin trousers, saved the sledge and Mari Pollock's life. And then they simply kept on. From now on, it was keep going and keep on. And we kept on, sometimes in the face of storms, of wind and snow that is impossible for you to imagine. On April 6, 1909, Perry planted a flag on a spot on the ice, the pole at last, or as close to it as they could figure. After 18 years, thousands of miles, the thin tattered flag they always carried looked as ragged and worn as Perry and Matt. For a few minutes, it hung limp and lifeless in the dead calm of the haze, and then a slight breeze, increasing in strength, caused the folds to straighten out, and soon it was rippling out in sparkling color. Three hearty cheers rang out on the still frosty air, our dumb dogs looking on in puzzled a surprise. But now, at last, these brave explorers could watch it fly from the top of the world. Thank you for writing questions about keep on. In our next lesson, we're going to use your questions again. So please make sure you keep them in a safe place, especially if you've written them on a separate piece of paper. Before we move on to IDR though, let's take a couple of minutes to think about what we heard in the story. I'm going to ask you a couple questions about the story, and you can either tell your answers to someone who's watching this video with you, or you can tell them to yourself. Remember, that's self-monitoring. What happens in this story? When I retold this story to myself, I said, first, I read that Matthew Henson was an African-American boy who was born just after the Civil War ended. Then, when he was 13 years old, he asked a sea captain if he could be a sailor. And even though it was against the rules to let someone be a sailor who was under 15 years old, the captain took him on as a cabin boy. When the captain died, Henson left the sea and started selling hats, but then he met Robert Perry, who asked him to join him in his expeditions to try to get to the North Pole. It was really hard for the group of explorers, and they tried several times. And during that last expedition, uh, Matthew Henson even fell into the water and had to be pulled out. Finally, Henson, the Inuit explorers, and Robert Perry reached a place that they thought was either the North Pole or pretty close to it. Think about what you told yourself. 
Did you tell yourself some of the same events that I said? The next question I'd like you to think about is what is the problem of the story and how did that problem get solved? When I've asked this question of other students who have heard the story, other kids often say that the problem of the story was that it was really difficult to get to the North Pole. And the way that it was solved was with uh, Matthew Henson's uh, his uh, resourcefulness and the rest of the group's teamwork. Now we're going to move on to IDR. Remember, when you're reading today and every day, you want to make sure that you are reading a just right book. A just right book is a book where you don't have to problem solve more than two or three times on a page and you're able to tell yourself about what happened on each page or couple page spread. Today and tomorrow, as you are reading, you are, going to you are going to start marking the places where you have questions. If you have post-it notes, you can write your questions on post-it notes and stick the post-it notes in your IDR book. If you don't, you can just use little pieces of paper that you can write your question marks on and then just use them as bookmarks in your book. You also have a stop and ask questions page inside your uh, learning packet that you can use for IDR as well. So you've got three choices, but you want to make sure that you're writing down your questions. I did my IDR time today before our lesson, and this is what my book looks like now. We ran out of post-its, so I've just been writing my questions on pieces of paper and then sticking them in my book at the spot where I had the question. I also have been writing the page numbers that my question was on so that if my <laughs> bookmarks fall out, I'll be able to remember what part I was wondering about. Today, as you are reading, and tomorrow, as you are reading, you want to add between two and three questions. Uh, we are going to use these questions later on in the week, so you want to make sure that you hang on to your IDR book, as well as the questions that you ask yourself as you are reading. So please keep your book in a safe place after you're done with your IDR time today and tomorrow. I wish you happy reading and happy questioning, and I'll see you soon. Thanks.